Hey, good morning. It's Thursday. We're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Kenny Polcari of O'Neill Securities. Hey, Kenny, good to see you. And you? All right, let's start with retail. We had Best Buy earnings, comps up 9%, good earnings from Macy's and TJX earlier in the week. What's your outlook on retail? It's been, it's been actually a turnaround in retail, right? Because it's been having such a difficult time recently. But I think retail, and certainly retail that's focusing much more on online sales and online presence, is doing much better than certainly the brick and mortar. We continue to see brick and mortar come under pressure, but yet retail in general is doing better. Best Buy's numbers today came out. They blew it out of the water. They're competing head to head with Amazon. Not a negative story there at all. And so uh, I actually think retail is going to be okay. And are these levels, in terms of valuation, good buying opportunities, given the growth that we might be getting now from retail? Well, they might be, but I think you have to look at it at the moment, just in the broader context of what's going on with the market in general, because the market, you know, the answer to that might be yes, but you may see a lot of these stocks pull back if you see a broader pullback in the market based on what's going on at the Fed and interest rates and all that. So I would just be more cautious, just over paying attention to kind of the broader picture. But listen, I like retail. I think it's come out of a nice base. I think you start to see some of these stocks move. And so, you know, it's a matter of just doing your homework. Let's talk about the broader markets. Two straight sessions of declines, pretty significant declines, of course, after a big run up. What do you think is going on here? Uh, listen, I think the market, when we had the break a couple of weeks ago, broke a bunch of technical levels and did a lot of internal damage to the broader market. I think the recovery was much too fast. I wouldn't be surprised to see us you know, come down once again and test at least the intermediate. We broke through the 50-day yesterday. We were below it this morning. We're now just teasing with it. But uh, my sense is the market's got to come back and test the lows again uh, really? before really before it really moves ahead. And look, Jay Powell's made it very clear the other Tuesday when he, when he uh, did his Humphrey Hawkins testimony and this morning again he's going to talk very much about the economy and what his role is and he's not going to be beholden to any temper tantrum that the market that the market has and he made that very clear and I actually I think that's actually very very positive not only for the country but then for the markets as well are these inflation worries overblown because we just got January PCE up 1.7 percent year-over-year core up 1.5 right but those were expected those weren't those numbers weren't out of line that's what the market expected so therefore that's in line and it's still below that two percent number sure. right and so the two percent number is the kind of the boogeyman that we've been talking about for years and years we haven't gotten there yet my fear about inflation and, and uh, the fear that a lot of people are having now about inflation is that if it picks up and it picks up quickly it may it may just the momentum may take it through two percent and then higher and uh, and so I think that's kind of the concern and I think Jay Powell made that also very clear and that thus his comments were more hawkish and I actually I think that's good uh, you said two percent inflation target is his boogeyman is a three percent ten-year yield also a boogeyman well it <laughs> has been the boogeyman right and I do think at the moment that three percent continues to be the wall that we're gonna hit now what is gonna be interesting is when we hit three percent on the ten-year yield is the market immediately gonna hit a wall and just churn or is it going to hit a wall and back off, um, which I think is it is what it's going to do. But then the market, as long as the economy and the global economy continues to be strong and earnings come in, the market will adjust to that and that will be good and then we'll move up and through 3%. But I think initially it will continue to be the boogeyman. You know, many strategists agree that volatility is back and perhaps here to stay. But when we see, you know, two weeks straight up and then a week down, is that really volatility? What happens to this sideways trade? No, the, the, the volatility, I think people more Concern about intraday volatility when you see the market, you know, down 100, up 200, and down 150, all within the same day. If you've got, you know, the market under pressure, under pressure, kind of moving in one direction, that's not as, that's not the kind of volatility I think people are worried about. I think they're much more worried about the intraday, and so therefore, I think we're going to see more intraday volatility. Uh, but I think the market has to have ha has to test lower first, build a base, and then I think you're going to start to see not only the market do better, but I will see as we move forward through the year, and you start to see the the day data points improving, you're going to see more of that intraday volatility, which, you know, for a trader is a great thing. That's something that That's people something like you want. have wanted. Well, they, you want the intraday volatility. It's a long-term investor. It's kind of noise in it, and, and it's annoying to you to have that intraday volatility. But honestly, as a trader or as somebody, you know, trying to trying to represent institutions as they're getting in and out, uh, the volatility is actually a good thing. All right. And before we go, any sectors that seem attractive to you beyond retail, that, like we talked about earlier? Now, listen, I like energy and I like the banks because, listen, if we're going, if we're going to, uh, we're moving forward, certainly the bank's going to benefit with higher rates. And I think energy is, continues to be, um, continues to have room on the upside because it had gotten so had gotten so destroyed. Now I don't think oil necessarily is going to seventy or eighty dollars a barrel. I think oil is going to settle right in near high fifties and sixties. But yet then I think the certainly the U.S. energy companies are going to do better. All right, Kenny Polcari, O'Neill Securities. Thank you as always.